The Charles Play Chucky franchise is nearly 30 years old now. Uh, what, how do you think, it, what's the reason you think it's actually survived <laughs> all these years, considering Elm Street and Halloween, Hellraiser of all? Why do you think? I'm, I'm like, seriously, I'm interested to hear, well, I, I will answer the question, of course. <laughs> I'm, <so> fasc <laughs> I'm fascinated to hear what other people think about that. I think it's actually gone through the rejects from Bride of Chucky, it's changed direction and tone a little right. bit. And I think from that point onwards, it's kind of taken on a new shape. Yeah, I think, I, th I, I think that's exactly right. I think part of the reason for the franchise's longevity is that we, it's important to us to sort of reinvent it you know, and keep it fresh. We don't ever want to make the same movie over and over again. So, as you said, with Bride and Seed, we went into more comedic territory and kind of mined that for all it was worth. Um, with uh, Starting with Curse, when we introduced Fiona's character, we brought it back to its uh, more classic horror roots. Mm -hmm. Now with this one, with Cult, we continue Nika's story and we we continue along the the straightforward, horrific, path, but we didn't want to be, make, again, the same movie, so Jennifer Tilly, who plays Tiffany, she has a greater presence in this movie than she had in the last one, and of course she brings a very specific flavor, which is darkly comic, like Chucky himself. Mm. So for me, I always felt like putting Jennifer and Fiona in a scene together always reminded me of Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. Because, you know, it's like, we do you know the slogan, two great tastes that are even greater together. Yeah, yeah. How did you feel about coming into the franchise? I know it's your, your, your second time in it now, yeah. Is that right? Yeah. And because uh, it must have always felt a part of your life, what with your father's involvement and stuff. So did it feel like a natural progression to suddenly? I, I well, no. I mean, I, I, uh, I, I was really scared to audition for it and and then when I got it I was even I think I was more terrified to do just because it had been part of my life um that I was really scared to fail in a way that I, I usually am not starting a project um because it it meant a little bit more to me and in the, the latest one it tends to have to be I mean the last one was, as you said was scarier uh, but this one tends to be a bit more funny and incorporating traits from like Bride of Chucky and Seed as well. Did you find blending comedy and horror to be a challenge? Yeah, that's always a challenge. It's always, you know, a fine line to walk and to, and, you know, to get that formula just right. But I mean, that's, you know, one of the, the fun things about it is, is the challenge. And, and, you know, with this one, we didn't want to go back to the fully comedic tone of Bride and Seed, but, you know, still wanted to maintain the, the, the scary. And I think that that's one of the, th the great things about what Fiona brings to it is that she, she grounds it all and she makes you feel like there are real lives at stake. And I think, and I think that's just it's like a, a crucial aspect of Cult of Chucky that even while some crazy stuff is going on with Tiffany and Chucky, Nika makes us feel like something terrible really could happen. And your character changes quite a lot throughout the whole film as well. Was that? Did you work together at an earlier stage to get that process right? And yeah, for years. <laughs> we talked about it for years. Forever. Yeah. Um, yeah. You know. I mean, Fiona and I got to know each other very well making the last movie, and so as I've always done with Brad and with Jennifer, I, you know, I, I. I make use of of the talent that's yeah. that's in in my life, and so I like I talk to Fiona a lot <laughs> about like what can we do with her character, and and I had I had some very specific ideas about what I wanted to happen to her, um, and I think that's what you're alluding to in your. <laughs> It was, it, it was, it, I, I, I had to find a way to make that happen, but make it interesting and not goofy. That was the challenge. Yeah. I think you managed to succeed. Oh, it's inter it looks like it could go off into an interesting new direction without spoiling it. Are there any plans for sequel, further sequels in place? Yeah, I, you know, I, it, the nice thing about having a franchise is over the years, you know, you come up with ideas and maybe they're not going to work for this particular movie, but you just like put it in a file and, you know, save yeah. it for, you know, five years or two movies later. Mm -hmm. So um, David Kirshner, our producer, who has been my partner on the movies from the very beginning, he and I are 
talking about a new iteration of Chucky, wh uh, what we can do with the franchise from here on out that, that the end of this movie helps set up and we're really excited about it. Chucky in the film refers to himself as a vintage mass-marketed children's story from the 1980s. Yeah. Do you think you are trying in a way to incorporate retro references to kind of keep the original fans happy? Yeah, I mean, I, I mean, I don't want the movie to be merely fan service because I think then that would just be not satisfying to to the audience at large. But I do like to hide little Easter eggs throughout for the diehard fans that they will pick up on little things. The line of dialogue you just mentioned is one of them, and they're sort of sprinkled throughout. Like at one point. Uh, the character played by Elizabeth Rose in Madeline, when they're in group therapy, someone refers to Nika as a multiple murderer, and she says, mass murderer, th there's a difference. Now, mm -hmm. diehard fans will know that that's a, a reference to Bride of Chucky, yeah. that dialogue. And so I, 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 I do that a, a few times throughout the movie in such a way that for for people who are new to the franchise, who are don't who don't study it the way we do, they're the, hopefully they'll just take that. Oh, that's a fun line. Mm -hmm. But for diehard fans, they're going, oh, it's speaking to me. Ding 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 ding. <laughs> so considering a true legend never goes out of style. So. I, I think fans will be surprised. Yeah. Because you know, that, that that's the the main thing is like how at, like when you've got something that's gone on for thirty years and seven films, mm. how do you subvert their expectations and give them something new in a way that's gonna oh my gosh, I didn't expect that. Yeah. yeah. Where is this gonna go from here? And that was our goal with this movie. And it's good because it kind of it, it opened it up and it looks like it's going to a new direction that hasn't been yeah. done before or yeah. new, new new territory. But uh, what was the, can I just ask you about your idea of setting it in one location? Because I thought that was quite interesting, or well, more know, or less. In one yeah, place. I mean, that well, it's something that we had done in Curse of Chucky, you know, which that was predominantly set in uh, Nika's house. And that and, and I, I, I like taking Chucky and plugging him into different subgenres. And so Curse of Chucky was sort of the old dark house movie. It was a little bit of taking a page from Agatha Christie where all of the events happen on one dark stormy night in one house um, it's partly frankly driven by budget you know we, you know we have a limited budget but what we try to do is rather than view that as a liability we see it as an opportunity um, we'd never seen Chucky in a mental institution before, and we've never seen him in that kind of genre before. That's a whole different subgenre, the Looney Bin genre. It's where you see movies like Scorsese, what was the uh, Shutter Island? I mean, it's just, it, it, it brings with it its own archetypes and expectations, and it was fun to put Chucky in that world. Also, aesthetically, it was important to me to do something completely different from the last movie, which was very gothic looking with that Victorian mansion. So when we decided to set it in, an, in a mental institution, I didn't want to do the expected thing of having it the crumbling Dickensian place, rather let's go completely modernist and linear and kind of, you know, at times we tried to make the space almost to, to invoke a probably too grandiose reference, Kubrick like yeah. you know in, in in its minimalism. So it was it's it was a fun new canvas to see Chucky operate in. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys! Hey, you guys, huh? Hey, you guys. Is yeah. that from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey!